Oh, yuck. What you doing, Marshall McLuhan? I didn't say I was going to say, what you doing, Marshall McLuhan? Oh, yeah. Don't want to waste all this film on our face, do we? <laughs> the medium is the message, you see. You know there was a hyphen in there, didn't you? M Mass H. No. No, always. And then it was massage last time. And Mass H. Put the hyphens in, and uh, you have the real message. Uh, yes, helps. yes, very good. Uh, they, they were, it was always intended to have hyphens. Well, I just got I just got hang of medium as a message, and then somebody told me, oh no, it's a medium as a message. Well, do, does anybody want to uh, MC this? You are really. Uh, it's kind of an ad. <laughs> ad lub. <laughs> and um, um, ad lub. And the rest of it. We were having a chat about the role of frustration in creating aggression, bigness, and war, if you like. But um, frustrated people feel the need to get bigger and stronger. Uh, bureaucracies and committees always have to form new divisions and new committees in order to get rid of their frustrations. Now, to get rid of traffic jams, we create masses of new highways, which create thousands of times more traffic until the highways become parking lots. This is where the dinosaurs fell apart through sheer frustration. But we were also talking about war as uh, not really the solution to the eco economic problem. And uh, then we were talking about the aggressive music yeah. of the empire and your music as a new type of music which ended the era of wider still and wider shall our bounds be set. Whose music was that? The recessional. Kipling and Elgar? I don't know who did the music for the, mu <laughs> for the words of Kipling. But um, your music is um, not uh, the um, frustrated kind. Eh? Do you think of your music as it related to the frustrations of mankind or to the contentment? The, the net result is uh, content, contentment, but we get rid of frustration through the music, obviously. Mm -hmm. And like we were saying before it ran out, the Beatles and their ilk were created by the vacuum of non-conscription for the army, you know. And I'm, I'm not aware of that uh, Well, it, it suddenly ended in Britain. They were, when I was still <coughs> 16, I was looking forward to hiding in Ireland because they had, still had conscription. And then it was all over. I just missed it in 1940. Mm. And then from, from then on, we, the whole music thing burst out. And we just, we just knew we were the army that never was. Mm. You know, we're the generation that were allowed to live. But and uh, uh, the music came out of that. Mm. See, I think we're still living in a primitive age because even though you do say about this, total communication is B.O., etc. You're not communicating with us on a B.O. level. You're still, you know, communicating with us on a language level. Um, I believe in total communication as touch, you know. I would, if I may do this to you, no. you know, no. this would be a fantastic sort of uh, fear thing for, I mean, in our age, you know. We I say mean, it's I either improper touched. or, you know, there's all sorts of inhibition well, about touching people. You know the English idiom, I was touched by the, his gesture. Yes. Uh, this is a very important word. It means uh, involved, mm -hmm. uh, moved. But people say this in involved. Mm -hmm. uh, in this time, I think you'll find that involvement is inescapable well, and uh, is universal. There's one way of escaping involvement is to use language. And you think you can mm -hmm. talk understanding right out the window? I think uh, they seem to do it to me. <laughs> the, the next generation is doing it. You see, for instance, there's this uh, um, other way to good way to talk understanding out the window. About the children, you know. Children can go to this museum and at one point they can touch the object. It's a fantastic thing. Mm -hmm. And also, for instance, um, well, you, you asked me what I was doing in art, you know. For instance, one concert I always do is 
to ask everybody in the audience to touch each other in the dark. And everybody has this fantastic inhibition about 500 people there. Suddenly hmm. starts to giggle, you know. And, uh, we call it invasion of privacy. <laughs> yes, yes. But why? You know. Yes. And why not language? Hmm. So language is a mask, is it? Hmm. Language is a form of organized stutter. I think it's a form of simply trying. And trying. literally, uh, you chop your sounds up into bits in order to talk. Now, when you sing, you don't stutter. So singing is a way of stretching language into long, harmonious patterns and cycles. If you, you uh, had to, had to, uh, so how do you think about language well, in language your song? Language and song, to me, is just, vibration. like, t apart from just being pure vibration, it's just like trying to describe a dream. And because we don't have telepathy or whatever it is we want, that we try and describe the dream to each other to verify each other's what we know or what we, hope we believe is mm -hmm. inside each other and the stuttering is right because we we can't say it mm -hmm. however we say it it's never mm -hmm. how you want it now the moment you sing you feel that you're communicating much more yes because the words are irrelevant mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. really exactly. and if you create an environment you yes. create an environment that involves Everybody. Yes. He creates the rhythm, you know. The rhythm is so important. And that's why I think word when they're just talks, you know, the rhythm of it is just like walking, whereas their rhythm is the rhythm of the car, you know, and the rhythm of people running, or it's a running rhythm. Mm. And so that's why I think it's caught up, in it? Yeah, I mean, well, our rhythm, it was sort of everybody's rhythm, African rhythm. Mm. But people complained always about rock and roll records or whatever they were but not being able to understand the words and whether they were always irrelevant you know it was just the pure well, sound uh, ron and martin say we don't tell jokes we just project the mood yes and they tell jokes at such a speed that you can't hear them anyway but they do project a mood yes. you you're you're concerned with that yes mm. pure projecting mood. a mood mm. and defining it uh, in uh, putting some a uh, pattern so that other people can find the pattern and participate. Order, yes, participate in so the pattern. As soon as, as soon as you find a pattern, to break it, otherwise it's boring. You feel the, that uh, once you've found the pattern, you have a you you're, you're more or less obliged to scrap it. Yes, mm. that's very interesting. Do do because it's always it's always about searching for the ultimate, mm. and each each pattern you find or each format yeah. is another little trip off the side on the on the a children's spin, progress a spin-off yeah a nice new phrase they have yes in the business world for for a business they want to junk or yes. throw away they call it a spin-off the other word i hardware and software <laughs> yes yeah. and uh, i i'm I, I think of this time that we live in as having come to the end of steel you can use steel in various sen many senses but when you become totally involved in each other you can't help but stealing from each other and you can't help, but on the other hand, you can't steal anymore in the old sense of getting away with it. Well, to get the I swag. I using the word emerge or something. Stealing. I mean, you can never steal anything. Uh, nothing is going to be lost, you know. It's not like you pour a water in a cup on this side cup, mm. that this side would be empty. No. When you pour it, both sides would be full, you know. That's right. The uh, experience that is the result of the pouring is also fulfillment mm. is not emptying but filling there's a complementarity here why i think you know this yeah. logical thinking made people start to be so fearful of giving because yeah. they feel that if you give yeah. then you're going to lose yeah. but it's not that no. giving is getting no. too. In, in dialogue uh, you don't give yourself away you expect to discover something i i have discovered a great deal in the last few minutes talking with you. Now, what you said, I think what you said about the, uh, the need to find a pattern and then to ditch it or scrap it, it's fascinating. I think your audience would be very interested to know uh, what are the patterns you feel are most relevant, most live, and the ones that you don't want anymore. Well, uh, the beetle pattern is one that has to be scrapped because uh, if it remains the same it's a monument or a museum 
And one thing this age is about is no museums. And the Beatles turned into a museum, so they have to be scrapped or deformed or something. They, they're, in danger, they're in danger of becoming good taste. Yeah, oh, they, they, they <laughs> pass through that. They pass through that. They have to be well horsewhipped. <laughs>